Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to be talking about five growth stocks growing over 100% that you guys should buy now. Now, in my last episode, I talked about five exciting growth stocks that are under $10 that you guys should add to your watch list. Now, I understand that those stocks are much more risky because they're only sitting around $1 billion market cap. So in this episode, every stock on this list is going to be a more stable company. However, they're still growing over 100%. With that, let's dive right into it. All right, so the way I'm going to structure this list is going to be from the smallest market cap all the way to the largest market cap. Now, the smaller the company generally means the more volatile and risky. However, it can result in higher gains. So the first stock on this list is going to be Digital Turbine, ticker symbol APPS. Now, Digital Turbine provides media and mobile communication products and services for mobile operators, application advertisers, and other third parties worldwide. Now, Digital Turbine simplifies content discovery and delivers it directly to the device. Its on-device media platform powers frictionless app and content discovery, user acquisition and engagement, operational efficiency, and monetization opportunities. Digital Turbine's technology platform has been adopted by more than 40 mobile operators and OEMs and has delivered more than 3 billion app preloads for tens of thousands of advertising campaigns. Now, Digital Turbine enjoys a unique place in the mobile phone ecosystem, as it is the only company embedded in the Android operating system to allow for app downloading. Digital Turbine sits between major carriers, such as Verizon and AT&T, and the companies, such as Netflix and Amazon, that want their apps pre-installed on Android phones. Now, the real exciting thing about Digital Turbine is when we start digging into the numbers. Now, they have a really exciting growing install base, as their application media software has now been installed on more than 500 million total devices to date. Now, their market share is expanding, but still less than 15% total global Android smartphone penetration today. Meaning that Digital Turbine is still in its early innings and still has a huge opportunity ahead of it. Now, they've seen really strong, consistent growth in their cumulative application media devices. So what that translates to is rapid and efficient growth. We can see that the revenue from Q2 of 2020 to 2021 is up over 116%. Their adjusted EBITDA and non-GAAP EPS is also pretty similar. We can see in 2020, they had a huge sharp increase in both their revenue and their profits as the pandemic had a huge positive tailwind for their business. Even before the pandemic, Digital Turbine was growing pretty steadily. However, the Roni Rona accelerated their business two to three years in advance. Now, over the past four years, they've had an annual growth rate of greater than 58%. This significantly boosted their operating model as it drove more than 200% annual growth in their EBITDA, non-GAAP EPS, and free cash flow, showcasing the inherently profitable operating leverage in their model. To sum it up, Digital Turbine has a highly scalable platform business model, which is really uniquely positioned in this high growth, $100 billion mobile advertising market, which they're their leader in. They powered over 4 billion app preloads and have over 40 long-term agreements with top-tier global partners, such as Verizon, AT&T, and much more. They have a very diverse revenue mix, which is rapidly shifting to higher margin revenue streams. And this has significantly boosted their business as they're growing over 100% revenue and over 200% in their EBITDA. I wanted to quickly add in their most recent earnings report. Now for the third quarter of 2021, they had revenue of $88.6 million, representing 146% annual growth. Additionally, their non-GAAP adjusted EBITDA was $22.5 million, representing growth of more than 300% as compared to last year of $5.6 million. Now, Apps is currently stating around a $7.5 billion market cap, so it's still a fairly small company. Now, looking at their price of sales, they're around 30 so the company is very rich. However, that's because a lot of growth is already priced in. Apps is pushing 146% year-on-year revenue growth. And over the past quarters, they've been significantly beating their earnings expectations. With 6,000 apps being added per day to the Android platform, demand for the limited number of app slots has only increased. Fortunately, for Digital Turbine, both the number of devices and revenue per device continue to improve, which have helped drive up the share price. However, I think the larger driver was earlier this year as a company acquired Mobile Posse, which provides media and advertising solutions for operator and OEM partners while delivering richer, more relevant content to end users. This is a content business that generates substantial recurring revenue over the life of the phone and is not tied to activations or new phone sales as the historical app install business is. Mobile Posse's recurring revenue nature is attractive 
and is a potential to sell Mobile Posse's products into the existing digital turbine base and vice versa. I believe that this remains a very well-positioned company with the possibility that cross-selling will yield step function increases in growth if successful. I believe Digital Turbine is very well positioned as the leader in this whole entire market and as this market continues to grow, so will Digital Turbine. Now this company is very expensive on a today basis, however if we're forecasting for future growth, still is a pretty compelling investment for the long term. Now Digital Turbine has been one of my favorite stocks this year. I was fortunate enough to get in around $12, however I kept on adding to my position as the stock continued to run. Even at prices today. I still think apps still has a really bright future and would still be a good investment. So next we have Etsy, which is an internet retail company. Now Etsy operates online marketplaces for buyers and sellers, primarily in North America and Europe. Its online marketplace includes Etsy.com and Reverb.com. The company offers approximately 66 million items in its various retail categories to its buyers. It also provides various seller services, including Etsy payments, a payment processing service, Etsy ads, an advertising platform, and Etsy shipping labels, which allows sellers in the US and abroad to purchase discounted shipping labels. In addition, the company offers various seller tools, including Shop Manager Dashboard, a centralized hub for Etsy sellers to track orders, manage inventory, view metrics and statistics, and have conversations with the customers. Targeted offers a sales, promotion, a media tool, education resources such as blog posts and video tutorials for sellers, Etsy Seller Handbook, and Etsy Teams, a platform to build personal relationships with other Etsy sellers. Etsy was founded in 2005 and is headquartered in Brooklyn, New York. Now, 2020 was a tough year for many stocks, but it also thrust others into the spotlight. Etsy answered the call by providing much needed income opportunities for many people whose jobs were displaced by the COVID-19 pandemic. Forced to stay home from work, these budding entrepreneurs turn to Etsy's marketplace for arts, crafts, and other creative endeavors. As a result, Etsy's stock price quadrupled last year. Even though the company benefited from sales of face masks, Etsy isn't just another COVID play. Instead, the pandemic has simply been a catalyst for the online marketplace to distinguish itself from larger e-commerce players like Amazon. Now, Etsy is taking what it's learned to implement valuable improvements, making its platform much more attractive to the sellers who's discovered how lucrative being on the craft-focused marketplace can be. Etsy intends to add features like personalized search while expanding its marketing efforts to make its marketplace a go-to source for unique gifts. Bolstering its in-house tech expertise should also help Etsy keep up with growing traffic on its website. Between those efforts and prospects for international expansion, Etsy looks like it still has a long growth runway ahead of it. So it's hard not to be bullish on Etsy or e-commerce in general. Now they delivered spectacular 2020 financial results with revenue around $1.7 billion, which is 111% year over year growth. Now Etsy outpaced e-commerce growth by more than 2.5 times. And Etsy is now one of the most recognizable e-commerce brands in the US, ranking fourth on the largest e-commerce site by monthly visits in the US. They continue to expand the global reach as they're making significant growth in their sales in UK and Germany. Now, the international growth is up over 152% year over year. Etsy is doing an extremely good job by bolstering its business for not only its sellers, but also for the buyers. Etsy is continuing to add tons of new features to help bolster the user experience on both sides. And Etsy has done a really good job of crafting its own niche within this online shopping industry, being the go-to place for a lot of unique and personalized goods. Now their GMS or gross merchandise sold is at $3.6 billion in the fourth quarter, which is up around 120% year over year. The revenue is at 617 million, which is up around 130 year over year. And their adjusted EBITDA is around 200 million with around 30% margin. Now the marketplace revenue is really their cash cow as it accounts for around 77% of their overall revenue. And that's growing at a 150% clip year over year. Now, Etsy is currently sitting around a $27 billion market cap, with the price of sales at 21. Of course, a lot of growth is already priced in. However, given their strong growth rate and their good financials, I really like Etsy here. With this recent pullback, Etsy under $200 could be a pretty compelling investment. Next, we have Teladoc Health, ticker symbol TDOC. 
Now, Teladoc Health is on a mission to empower all people everywhere to live healthier lives by transforming the healthcare experience. Recognized as a world leader in whole person virtual care, Teladoc Health addresses the full spectrum of health and well being. Powered by human expertise, advanced technology, and insights to deliver improved clinical outcomes at scale. Now, they serve more than 175 countries and ranked best in KLAS for virtual care platforms in 2020. Teladoc Health leverages extensive expertise and data driven insights to meet the growing healthcare needs of customers and healthcare professionals. To put it simply, Teladoc is a virtual healthcare company that provides a wide array of different telemedicine offerings. Their business model involves contracting with individuals, healthcare insurers, employers, healthcare systems, and hospitals for the remote services. Now, while cost reduction is often touted as a number one benefit to healthcare organizations for their services, the ability to extend care to the immobile population, such as the elderly and rural-based individuals, represents a rapidly growing segment of their user base. In addition, the Rona Rona is anticipated to be a major driver for telemedicine in general, and in particular, many of the Teladoc Health Service offerings. Now, Teladoc has a really consistent track record of robust growth. They've seen over 70% compound annual growth rate, with 80% of that being recurring revenue. Now, they've seen over 40% growth year over year in their paid membership and over 80% growth in their visits. Now, since 2018, they've seen adjusted EBITDA profitability, and from 2019, they've seen positive operating cash flow. Now, investing in Teladoc is really taking a bet on the telehealth industry, as Teladoc Health is the global leader in comprehensive virtual care. They have over 70 million U.S. lives with access to legacy Teladoc Health solutions, and over 40% of Fortune 500 companies use Teladoc Health. Across all their channels, Teladoc Health provided and enabled over 14 million visits in 2020. Now, what's really exciting is that they're growing into a $250 billion U.S. virtual care market opportunity. And the thing is that they're still only scratching the surface. They have significant room to grow as they believe that there's a 65 million potential users at current Teladoc clinics. While there's still a big opportunity in the rest of the market with 182 million people. Consumer adoption and trust at scale is really driving lasting growth as the rate of people trying a Teladoc is accelerating and as they gain more customers, which continues to add to the recurring revenue over time. I wanted to add in their most recent earnings report, which was the fourth quarter 2020 results. Now in this quarter, revenue grew 145% year over year to $383 million and total visits increased 139% to $3 million. This puts their full year revenue growth at just shy of 100% year on year to $1.1 billion, and total visits increased 156% to $10.6 million. Now, Teladoc is currently sitting around a $33 billion market cap with a price to sales at 19. So, like all fast growing software companies, they have a pretty rich valuation. But given their growth rates and being the leader in this huge total addressable market, I think the future is really bright for Teladoc. Number four is Peloton Interactive. Now, Peloton provides interactive fitness products in North America and internationally. It offers connected fitness products such as the Peloton Bike and the Peloton Tread, which include touchscreen that streams live and on-demand classes. The company also provides connected fitness subscriptions for multiple household users and access to all live and on-demand classes as well as the Peloton digital app for connected fitness subscribers to provide access to its classes. As of December 2020, it had approximately 3.6 million members. The company markets and sells its interactive fitness products directly through its retail showrooms and at OnePeloton.com. Peloton was founded in 2012 and is headquartered in New York, New York. Now, Peloton's mission is to use technology and design to connect the world through fitness empowering people to be the best version of themselves anywhere, anytime. Now, what's great is that they have a unique vertically integrated business as they own the whole entire tech stack from hardware, software, and media. They also have 103 retail stores and a growing global operation of logistics. Now, to say that people like Peloton's products is probably an understatement as they've seen amazing demand for the products. They've seen over 100% annual revenue growth for six years running. Their workout growth continues to outpace their subscription growth as their connected fitness subscriptions is up from 2018 to 2020 
at 107%. However, the total workouts during that same time is up 213%. Peloton has one of the best net promoter scores that I've ever seen at 94, meaning that the customers truly love their product. Now, what's really made Peloton a leader in the sport tech industry is that they have really high quality products. Not only is their biking equipment really top notch, but their 24 inch full HD touchscreen and all the content that they provide. Now Peloton's goal is to be the leader in this connected fitness market and their vertical integration and direct to consumer capabilities is one of their competitive advantages. They made significant investments to be able to ramp up their production, scale, automation, and efficiency by building out multiple factories in China. Now, one of the key standout with Peloton is that they have really high engagement, which drives really low churn, as their churn from 2017 to 2020 is under 1%. All in all, the connected fitness subscriptions are up drastically, which because it's a subscription business, it means it's recurring revenue, which helps boost their gross margins. Just in 2020, they started having positive adjusted EBITDA margins, which has continued to grow into 2021. Now, the most recent earnings was the Q2 of 2021 which they saw their connected fitness subscriptions grow 134% to approximately 1.6 million and paid digital subscriptions grew 472% to approximately 625,000. Their total revenue grew 128% to 1.06 billion and their net income was 63.6 million. With a price to sales at just shy of 15. When I think of Peloton, I think of Apple because of the high quality products services, and community behind it. And that's why I think Peloton, even to this day at their valuation, still has a lot more room to run. Last up on the list, we have Square. Now, in 2009, Jack Dorsey and Jim McKinley created Square, fulfilling their dream of creating technology capable of aggregating merchant services and mobile payments into a single, easy-to-use service. Less than a decade later, Square was downloaded over 34 million times by small businesses that use it to accept credit card payments, track sales and inventory, and obtain financing. Square's product line includes Square Cash, which allows users to send and receive money for free through a mobile application, and Square Point of Sale, a free application that lets merchants process payments via smartphone. Square has built an entire business toolkit of both hardware and software products and are working to find new and better ways to help businesses succeed on their own terms. Now they have two significant ecosystems, one for the seller with point of sale and managed payments and with their peer-to-peer digital cash services with Cash App. Now their five-year compound annual growth rate is at 40%. However, in the past two years, this has gone up quite significantly. Now, their seller ecosystem represents an $85 billion opportunity in the U.S. However, their cash app ecosystem has a large opportunity in the customer financial services and $9 trillion in addressable volume in the U.S. alone. This represents a $60 billion revenue opportunity in the U.S. Now, their seller ecosystem has been a profit beast as it continued to grow steadily but significantly from 2015 towards at today. Now, on their cash app side of the business, they've driven over 100% growth year on year across the diversity of services and revenue streams from sending, spending, and investing. Their monthly transacting actives have increased three times over the past three years, which translates to very strong and consistent growth in their profit. Now, just last week, Square released their earnings, which is the fourth quarter for 2020. Now, their total net revenue was $3.16 billion for this whole quarter, up 141% year over year. The revenue was $9.5 billion, an increase of over 100% for the full year. However, excluding Bitcoin, the revenue for this quarter would be up 23% and for the whole year, 17%. So definitely a little disappointing to see that Bitcoin is really driving their whole entire revenue. However, we still need to take into account that the revenues are still growing very fast. Additionally, their gross profit was $804 million, which was up 52% year over year. Now, Square is currently sitting at a $104 billion market cap, which translates to a price of sales of 16. Out of this whole list, Square is the most stable and solid company, and I believe they'll have continued success as fintech and cryptocurrencies will only continue to get more popular over time. 
It's a new paradigm that we live in, and Square is really becoming the leader within this fintech space. Now, excluding Bitcoin, Square isn't really going that fast, so that's definitely something that we need to take account of. However, I still like Square as a stable, solid company that continues to grow. So with that, guys, that was my list of the top five growth stocks that are growing over 100% that you guys should buy now. All these stocks have done tremendously well in the past year because of this pandemic tailwind. Now, I understand that some might write these companies off because they've gotten a huge boost because of this pandemic. However, I believe that this has been a huge acceleration of around two to three years for these companies and then that they're now positioned for success for the decade to come. Now, when it comes to things like online shopping and telemedicine, I believe the positives significantly outweigh the negatives. This is primarily due to convenience and affordability. Even with a lot of growth priced into a lot of these stocks, I still think there's significant upside for all of them. So with that, I would love to hear what you guys think about some of these companies and what you plan on doing with some of these stocks. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys plan on doing. With that guys, thanks as always for sticking around. I'll see you in the next video and let's go get that bag.